Association and to the use of fire and explosives against our officers and people and facilities. Over the past several weeks, we have seen many demonstrations throughout the city. Many demonstrators have been peaceful. However, many have not. Since July 19th, we have seen three protests where individuals have embedded themselves and where they were particularly destructive and violent inside the peaceful group. Last Saturday, a group of protesters went to the Youth Service Center where people within the group threw incendiary devices, Molotov cocktails, into a construction site where, which resulted in several trailers being destroyed by fire. The group went from the construction site to the East Precinct. A van that was closely following the group uh, arrived at the precinct with the group. People were seen removing items and distributing them to people within the group. These items were described as baseball bats, pyrotechnic explosives, APR respirators, improvised shields, and face masks. Moments later, an explosion blew an eight-inch hole into the wall of the East Precinct. Because of the manner in which the vehicle was parked and abandoned, there was a real fear that it would contain explosive devices that could detonate. Uh, the vehicle was impounded. Detectives applied for a search warrant, and yesterday a judge granted that request. The search yielded one, pyrotechnic explosives, smoke bombs bundled together and lit and unlit, but able to cause large amounts of smoke that are caustic to humans, bear spray, using it on anything but bears is a federal offense, pepper spray, stun guns, improvised spike strips. A detective from our arson bomb squad will talk more about each of these items in just a moment. But in total, 59 officers were injured on Saturday. And what you're going to see is evidence that not everyone that comes to these protests is peaceful. Peaceful protesters do not show up with a van full of bear spray, stun guns, spike strips, and explosives. I'm going to turn this over to uh, Sergeant Detective James Lee, who will describe what we're seeing in the photos. And then after that, he'll be followed by Mayor Durkin with some comments. Detective? at the youth service center that was not completely burned down. If you look closely here, you'll see remnants of a whip and the end of a bottle cap from the Molotov cocktail that was not completely consumed in the fire. These are some consumer type uh, pepper spray and tasers that you could buy. Uh, I see no reason why anybody would need to arm themselves with these coming to a peaceful protest. These are improvised spike strips with nails, and you seeing that protesters are using to slow down our bike officers and to use them to disable the bicycle. Here you have uh, smoke bombs and mortars. Uh, they're taping multiple uh, items, uh, pyrotechnic devices together to increase the effect. And then these are gas masks and filters. Uh, one of the gas masks here is the same brand as the ones that we use. Um, they're very organized. They have them in bins. They're labeled. And these are some of the fireworks, uh, pyrotechnic explosive devices that we recovered. Obviously, this is not from a fireworks stand. This is from the vehicles that they were using during the protest. And then here is some of the bear spray that we recovered. Uh, bear spray is much stronger than the pepper spray that the police use. Uh, this is very consistent with what we have heard from our frontline officers, that they're being sprayed with a uh, orange type of chemical, which is very consistent with bear spray. It's causing burns and itching and stinging to their face and uh, exposed skin. This lasts much longer than the consumer type of pepper spray or the pepper spray that police use, and it's much stronger. And it's not safe for use on humans. And it's and a federal and, offense yes. to use it on humans. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to the mayor. Thank you very much, and thank you, Chief. <clears throat> I also want to thank Chief Best for her unwavering commitment to true community-based policing, for her consistent continued vision and leadership during this really historic moment in our city and country. I want to thank Chief Scoggins, who could not be here, for his continued work to preserve the health and safety of our communities 
and to respond to fires in often dangerous and extraordinary circumstances. The fires that were set this weekend, make no mistake about it, were very dangerous. Dangerous not just to the people who were in and around those premises, but dangerous to the firefighters who respond. Chief Scoggins has described how in those buildings that were burned, there were propane tanks, generators, and the like. Those can provide particular dangers to firefighters who respond to fires. As many of as you know, I represented families of firefighters who died in the Pang Warehouse fire. Every time a firefighter responds to a fire, that is a dangerous situation. We also saw fires set in commercial stores where there were residential units above it. A fire set in a store can spread very quickly, as Chief Scoggins has described. Once a fire gets fully involved, it is much more difficult to rescue people. I also want to say we have been in an unprecedented time in our city. And one of the unprecedented things we are experiencing is an historic civil rights reckoning, not just in Seattle, but across this country. And as part of that reckoning, we have seen thousands of people take to the streets in Seattle and millions of people nationwide. Peaceful protests are good for America and good for our city. They push us to be better. They are core tenet of who we are as a country. We literally were a city, a, a country, that was born of protest. Many people have gathered to protest police brutality, the death and murder of George Floyd, as well as the president's actions throughout his tenure. I have participated in protest. Early on, there was the Women's March, where hundreds of thousands of people gathered to protest. As a former United States Attorney and Chief Federal Law Enforcement Officer, I am very concerned about the President's actions and the deployment of federal agents into Portland and other cities. Today's announcement they will be removing agents from Portland I think was very positive. Their agreement to remove them from Seattle I think will increase public safety. And that's because I believe that I want Carmen Best, Chief Carmen Best, in charge of public safety in the city of Seattle, not Donald Trump. Across this country, we saw that violence did escalate when the actions happened and when the president has tweeted about dominating the streets. But in our city, it is also a truth that arson, destruction, and violence have occurred, and they undermine the push and need and voice for systemic change. They put the health and safety of our residents, of peaceful protesters, of our police officers, and our firefighters in jeopardy. Under the leadership of Chief Best, our police department has an obligation to disperse a crowd when there are dangers to the public safety, like explosives, fires, and individuals intent on causing harm. And I think what we saw in our city last week in three different protests that there were individuals who were intent on causing harm. And the items seized from this van show exactly what they were planning, and we saw the results of it on our street. We saw peaceful demonstrators injured. We saw officers injured. And I know that there were journalists who were caught in police action, but who also were harassed or intimidated by some of those who came to do wrong. And the use of force that was inappropriately deployed this weekend, I believe that when that occurs, it will be investigated by the OPA. I know they're investigating it now. I've spoken with the head of OPA who's received complaints about behavior over the weekend. We have one of the most robust, independent civilian oversight systems of any police department in the country. They will thoroughly investigate it, and when they make a recommendation, Chief Best will be the one who holds officers accountable. And she has shown that she has and will hold officers accountable. I again want to just really ask everyone that we need peace in our city. Since the beginning of July, we have had weeks of peaceful protests in Seattle with relatively few incidents and community and government continue to work together to transform what the collective voices on the streets are asking for into true systemic change 
for our city. Even before July, we saw marches and protests in which tens of thousands of people demanded justice, and there was not a single incident. As a community, a government, and a police department, we have to be laser focused on the kind of transformational change that people are demanding and that this moment in history requires of us. But again, acts of destruction, violence, and hateful speech, none of that gets us to where we need to be. It's not just a distraction, it undermines the central message and the actions we want to take together as a city. It's also sowing those divisions that the president wants. It is playing right into his hands. I believe wholeheartedly in reshaping the police department. Chief Best and I have talked about how we can reimagine policing and make sure that this city again leads the way for the nation. We can right some of the historical wrongs caused by the criminal justice system. I've said it before, we as a city must acknowledge, admit, and apologize that our systems in our city and across this country were built on systemic racism. If we don't acknowledge it, we can't fix it. I've also said that I think the longest term way to bring peace to the streets is to bring justice to the systems. But that's what we need to focus on. The things you are seeing here today, that kind of activity we saw in our city and we've seen in other cities, it does not get us closer to justice. Instead, I think it takes us further away. I believe our city has the determination, the creativity, the will, and the public support to lead the nation in transforming policing and the way we invest in our communities. And I also believe that Chief Best, both with her 30 years of experience, but also because of the leadership role she plays across this country, is the right person who can advise me on those changes, who can lead the city, and who knows how to move forward. But again, we must stop engaging in hateful language and destruction. We have to move beyond that. This level of conflict, it's not sustainable. We have to find a way to work together. We have to be in true conversation, as difficult as those conversations are sometimes to have. But to make the changes we need to translate to the real systemic improvements, we have to be able to have those conversations. This is one of the toughest times, if not the toughest time, in our city's history. We are facing three challenges that any one of them by themselves would be unprecedented for a city. We are in the midst and we're the starting place for a nationwide pandemic for the coronavirus. And it's getting worse again. We are also the place that saw first because of that, the economic devastation that that has brought to our city and disproportionately has hurt our communities of color. It has closed so many small businesses for good. Tens of thousands of people in our city have lost their jobs. This economic displacement will last probably through this year. We are facing for a city the toughest budget climate our city has ever faced. And that's because the residents and businesses of our city are facing the toughest economic climate they and their families have ever faced. We know we have a reckoning in America right now. We must confront racism. We must see how it affects policing and every other system, and we must work for greater justice. We also know that we continue to have challenges around affordability. We have the West Seattle Bridge, and we have a president who lacks empathy and takes actions to sow further division. So yes, 2020 has been a tough year. And it's going to be continue to be tough. But the way we get through it, the way we come out the other end, is if we find a way to say, we not just come back, but we come back better. We come back stronger. We come back more equitable. And that only happens if we can have these conversations that lead to good progressive change. We must get past the point where we just villainize each other or when we come into a peaceful protest and purposely disrupt it 
so that we can cause conflict with the police. That will not take us closer to justice. I truly do believe with this chief in this city, we can reimagine policing. We can make it so that we invest in a community to give that first line of defense for public safety, and that's a healthy community where people have access to health care and affordable housing, economic opportunity, and good education. And then when they call 911, when they have that emergency, the help they need shows up at their door. And sometimes that's a police officer, and they need them right now. Sometimes that's a firefighter, and they need them immediately. But sometimes it's a different kind of help. And we're going to have to have deep conversations with community and community-based organizations that know what their community needs. They know what healing they need. And then we have to build that system. But it cannot happen overnight. It cannot happen without a plan. And it cannot happen unless we talk to each other. I want to close by again thanking Chief Best. No one is more committed to this work and to make the changes that we need. I also want to thank the men and women of the police department, particularly those who were injured. They have worked hard over the last months. It's been difficult for them to see their entire organization villainized. We know that we can be better. We know we can make improvements. We know that there are things we've seen that we want to change, and the chief is leading that discussion nationally, and we can have it here locally. But with this chief, I know also, she will hold officers accountable. The system we have in place is robust. With that, I want to thank the detectives who worked on this case, and I'll turn it back over to Chief Bess. Okay, thank you, Mayor, so much for those words. Um, in closing, I just will say we absolutely support people having the First Amendment right to free speech and coming into our city. Um, but we ask that people do so peacefully. You know, last week we had the passing of John Lewis, you know, and who was an advocate. I mean, I feel like I stand on his shoulders. A person like me, a woman, African American, would not be the police chief, would not be in a position of authority, but for a people before me coming to demonstrations and participating. So we absolutely believe, I personally believe, that people should have that right. But we don't want to have people tear up our city injure our officers, injure other people, set fires, and put people at risk. That we cannot have. So I'm just making sure that I, I implore people, you know, if you come downtown, if you come anywhere in the city to demonstrate, you know, please do so peacefully. And we're going to continue to investigate crimes that occur in the city, and we're going to work with our community and continue to work with our community in healing and reconciliation and moving forward. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Are there questions? I think we're going to take questions here. Oh. I am going to take questions. <laughs> yes. Chief, um, where does the investigation stand with, with what we're seeing in front of us? How many people have been arrested? How many suspects are you looking for? Um, how active is that search? There's going to be a lot of questions about a lot of details on the investigation. Again, this is very early. It just launched. Um, I can tell you that we have, we're working with our partners um, and other agencies to make sure that we uh, contact uh, anyone involved and we're doing the follow-up, but there's not a lot of detail I can give you at this very moment. I'm sure there'll be a time, there'll be another press conference uh, that gives a lot more detail, but it's not going to happen a you know, any today. Any arrests? That you uh, no arrests on this yet. Yeah, this, um, most of this was taken from last weekend. I think all of it was taken from last weekend. Thank you. And so, you know, the time period, uh, as soon as we can get somebody in custody, we will. And we'll let you know about it when it happens. So these aren't all from that van incident? As far as I know, everything is from the van, except for the charred uh, Molotov cocktail, which was from uh, the construction site that was set on fire. So that's like hundreds or like thousands of dollars worth of like equipment all that, you're, you're absolutely right. Absolutely that's, right. That's like an organized group, and right now there's no arrests, and we don't know anything about it. Oh, and that thing I'm going to share with you today. That's fine. That's okay. Fine. <laughs> but from right. a policing standpoint, is there anything you can do to kind of preempt these, uh, these um, incidents um, in the field when there's thousands of people marching as well, identifying who the troublemakers are from Yeah, well, that's what, we're, that's what we're trying to do. That's why this investigation is being launched. That's why we're letting this information out there. We want people to know 
that you know people that come there's a group of folks that are embedding themselves within these uh, peaceful demonstrations they come to do harm and danger uh, we're highlighting that fact to the public and to all of you and we're going to follow up aggressively in our investigation and we're going to provide you as much information and as many details as we can at the appropriate time but not to imp and not to impede our investigation along the way Sure. I, I'm already seeing social media comments about well, things look like they're just sparklers and smoke bombs. When we see them taken together like this, I guess maybe just describe what the danger of some of these fireworks pose when we're talking about when, when people comment they're just sparklers, they're just smoke bombs. When you tape them together, you increase their effectiveness. Uh, Obviously, they're going to cause burns on officers, uh, increase the uh, explosion, the detonation when you uh, tape mortars together. You, if you tape enough together, you're going to get the same uh, reaction that you would on a quarter stick of dynamite. So a lot of the f injuries that you have seen on officers, these are caused by these uh, pyrotechnic explosives that they are taping together, taping the fuses together, and increasing the amount of explosion uh, fourfold easily. Do you know what the ratio is again between the bear spray versus what you guys traditionally use? Like, is it a tenth? The, the, what it could be anywhere from 30% to more stronger. Same chemical, though. Well. Uh, there's a different chemical composition. And it's a federal thing. And can you talk about the nails, yeah, the fact that the nails are also. Um, yeah. uh, so, James, can you go to the microphone? Otherwise, sure. I can <laughs> so uh, on that one photo, you're seeing nails used in foam to uh, flatten uh, bike officers' tires. Uh, if you add nails or other uh, metallic material to fireworks, you're creating an IED. Uh, it, is, it will and can be a deadly weapon. We're nail we're we're uh, I'm not uh, at liberty to discuss that right now. You know they were added to the, the tire yes. devices, but yes. you're not going to say whether they were added to explosives? No. So you would describe anything taped together like that as an IED? Yes. With the nails included? They are improvising fireworks. That's not what the uh, intention of the fireworks. They're not using it as uh, designed. Can you be a little more specific about this van and where you confiscated the, the van? And it was directly parked uh, in front of East Precinct. You, you mentioned fires were set in some commercial spaces. Do you know how many fires were set in commercial spaces and, and how bad those were? I'm just trying to get a sense of beyond that construction site. You said there were some that were under residential residential units. I'm sorry, what was the question? Uh, so I, I think I can answer that because, you know, James is our detective. He works in our bomb squad, does a great job, and probably is, is super excited to be um, put on spot like that. But um, we know that there was a fire in the Starbucks uh, at on 12th Avenue, uh, and, the, and that there are residents above that Starbucks. You know, I'm not the fire department chief, obviously, but uh, Chief Scoggins has talked about that and the potential danger uh, when you set a, something like that on fire. Luckily, fortunately, the, they were able to put it out. But if, some, if a building like that catches on fire and there's somebody disabled inside or otherwise incapacitated, you know, it is extremely, extremely dangerous, way beyond the property damage, but the, the potential uh, to danger of life uh, is, is, you know. Quickly, as the city council can you just talk about defunding the department, have you been invited to discuss with the city council or present any kind of item? Not as yet. Not as yet. It hasn't happened. Okay, we're going to close that. Mayor, do you want anything else? Or? I just, one last thing. I again want to thank the chief, and, and two things I want to say is, we have seen, for example, on Saturday, thousands of people marched. They marched peacefully and without incident, and you did not even see the presence of police until fires were set and the destruction began. And then I think if you go back and look at the media, thousands of people left and went home. And what was left was a, a very determined, and you can see, very well-organized group that came for only one purpose and that was to cause conflict and a fight with the police. I've talked to other mayors around the, the country, and particularly with Mayor Wheeler, and they're seeing this level of organization in other places. And so we will continue to protect those who protest peacefully. That is their right. It makes us better as a city. 
but actually also calling on people that if you see people doing this conduct, don't have any part with it. We are the accountability. Every one of us is part of the accountability system. Um, I also will, I don't know if any of you have heard about, the chief has described it for me, and many of you will see now in some of these protests that not only do they come well organized with this kind of destructive power, but they train and practice on what they call de-arrest. So that if an individual is arrested by the police, a number of people will swarm and try to pull that person away from the police. And so we will continue to hold our police accountable. We want them to, to only follow the rules and regulations. The Office of Police Accountability is looking at complaints today. This chief will hold them accountable. Um, but we do want people to protest peacefully. But we do have to find a way now as a city to move forward, to make the very important systemic changes, and to really sit down with each other and appeal to our common humanity and shoot for that kind of city we want, the city that really will be more just and more equitable. Thank you very much. I, I haven't seen that yet. Um, I will say I was elected to be mayor of Seattle. It's a democracy, and if sometime the voters decide they don't want me, that's all right, too. I think that this is, we've got three great challenges, and my focus is how do we keep people healthy in a pandemic? How do we, you know, help people who are suffering from this economic devastation? And how do we take the voices in the street and transmit that into sustainable change for a better and more just society? That's my focus. Thanks so much.